That's Alexa for Joel and Bodum, and you are watching Guitar Mania channel. Hi, I'm Antti. You're watching Guitar Mania channel. I'm a guitar and keyboard tech for children of Bodum, and uh, today we're going to take a look at Alexis Robes' uh, guitars and their live rigs. It's good to see you here in Bratislava in the Slovak Republic. Welcome, um, and, uh, and I guess congratulations are in order. It's uh, your 20th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, I guess, kind of. Um, that's when uh, me and the drummer, we started the band. But, um, you know, we had like so many lineup changes and stuff like that since, like, we started at 93 and we were like just 14 years old and stuff. So, I mean, I would say that the first album came out in 97 so to me it's actually more like the 16th year anniversary but i mean i don't really care you know? right whatever sounds better because their band history sometimes says you you founded the children of bottom in 93 but i mean it's more 16 for you yeah i mean i'm just counting from like <clears throat> when the when the first ca uh, album came out yeah. but I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> was there ever uh, was there ever a point in your career where you thought, "Oh God, I, I don't know how to carry on with this band or because of the lineup changes and stuff"? Yeah, right now. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, we've had the same, almost the same lineup since '97 uh, when the when the first album came out. It's just the guitar player, mm. the original guitar player, he quit in 2003, and after that, it's been Rob in the band. Mm. So that's actually Rob has been in the band for longer than the original guy was. So um, we've you know we've had the steady lineup since since forever mm. definitely, mm. and that's it's very important for us too. Um, I know a lot of bands you know they change members uh, quite often, but that's that's not what we do. Mm. You have got uh, you you returned with your eighth studio album. You returned to to your former record company, Nuclear Blast Records, Blast Records. So. Yeah they treating you well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of us were like totally psyched to be uh, be back with them. And and uh, I mean, not not to like, I'm not trying to slag Universal or anything like that, but I'm just saying that it's definitely uh, much better for Chilling Bone to be on a proper metal label where uh, they actually really do care about the music and they, they're, they're like metal people. So uh, the promotion and just the effort that they put on a hell of a lot, you know. It was the, the difference was just uh, amazing, you know. So right, right. How many of the new songs are you performing live? Of the new songs? Yeah, of the new songs of the. Uh, we had well, basically for the for the most of the tour, we played four new songs, but now we have three three new songs in the set list. The title track, "Scream for Silence." Yeah, yeah. and uh, "Dead Man's Hand on You." Dead Man's Hand on You. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw on your on your Facebook page that you have been added as a rock legend in band fuse available on Xbox and uh, PlayStation Three. I mean, that's a fantastic way to learn the guitar. But presumably, that was not stuff that was around when you first picked up the guitar to learn the instrument, was it? No, <laughs> no, no, no. The video games were very different from when I started. You know, it's cool though. You know, obviously, uh, you know, it's an honor for me to be involved with something like that. You know, so. Uh, you know, they got like Slash and stuff like that, you know, doing stuff for the game. And, and he, like, Slash would be one of the guys that I grew up listening to, and like, and I still do. So it's absolutely. Uh, I know, mean, things have moved so much forward. I mean, if you think what's available in terms of, uh, of tuition books mm -hmm. and material, it's incredible in, in, in that sector. I mean, not to mention, uh, also to mention your, particularly your tuition DVDs and stuff that, that, you, that you have done. You've, of, you've also, also been a guest. Um, in the Lauda Education Show with Testament's Alex Kolnick recently. How was that? Was was Alex Kolnick a, a one of your influences? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I definitely I, I did listen to a, a lot of Testament like when I was younger. And uh, yeah, he's always been a great guitar player, definitely. And he's a cool guy too, so uh, uh, yeah, he's definitely cool. Yeah, and you also mentioned that you, you, you liked or still like to listen to Poison. Absolutely, yeah. 
I mean, everybody does. Nobody just admits <laughs> it. <laughs> well, Ante, you just said uh, you, you've got three of Alexis' guitars here with you. Yeah. We're actually running, running with ten guitars on this tour. We got six Alexis guitars and, and four of Raw Pess. We got all kinds of goodies going on there, cameras on some. some and, uh, but today we're only running with eight. A couple of them are in the dressing room as warm-up guitars, but the main ones are still here. We can start with this one. We got two tunings. We got uh, high, whole step down to D, and this is Alex's main one for that one, the uh, CKY from 2003. What and strings is Alex using? Uh, it's DR strings. Alex's signature set from 10 to 56. 10 to 56. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how often does he changes the strings? Uh, basically every show. Every show. Yeah, we go with fresh strings all the time. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. They're all ESP custom shop stuff, very nice sounding, very reliable, very stable, kind of, you know, easy to work on. Yep. That's the main one there, and uh, here's the pink one, this is his main one for drop C, same model, basically, but different color, right. a newer one. This has seen a lot of action, and actually on, the, on a US tour, the whole body split in half that we fixed it on the road and it's still ticking and sounding very good. It has actually stainless steel frets fitted by Ruokangas guitars in Finland. It gives a bit more, bit more sustain and in the upper register and uh, uh -huh. kind of more I'd sensitive, uh, mm -hmm. sensitive bending feel. And the Floyd Rose, is it still the original Floyd Rose yeah. or the, did you have to change it at some stage? Uh, they, these, are, these are the original ones that okay. these have. Uh, Original Freud, Freud roses made by Schaller in Germany. Okay. Very right. good ones. Mm -hmm. And then you said uh, we have also Ropes guitars. Yeah, here. we have Ropes guitars. Here's his main one, the old war horse. This model, sort of a random star thing going on. It's also ESP custom shop. On this one, because he sweats a lot, so we get a lot more corrosion. On this one, I've swept the... Uh, Bridge, I think, a couple of times, and then not, I don't know how uh, many times. And there's got also scalloped fingerboard Yeah, it's here. got the, the last four frets are scalloped. Right, right. It's also very nice sounding guitars. It's very nice. Yeah. With an EMG humbucker. Yeah, it's well. the EMG H2 and an active preamp. So that's basically it. Beautiful, thanks. Yeah. What's the last guitar here? The uh, last ones are, these are Ropes too. He's yep. got a, this is his drop C tuning model with the reverse head headstock and basically the same kind of setup. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Simple so but effective. Excellent. Thanks so much, Ante. Yeah. You're welcome. Really much appreciated. Great. Well, what's the stuff that you're listening to at the moment? Any bands that, that you're in, in, into at the moment? Um, well, it's just, you know, a difference between on uh, like, you know, one day I could be listening to Dark Throne, or you know, then Poison the other, or or you know, like today I was listening to ACDC the whole day. Actually, I don't know why, but I you know, just kind of felt like it. And yesterday I was I was listening to Lamb of God, I think. So yeah, I mean, I really do. I mean, I have a very versatile uh, taste in music. What, what 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 when you when you really started to, to learn the guitar and picked up the, the guitar, what, what would you say are perhaps the most important killer rhythm riffs that, that you were into and that you had definitely to figure out how to play them? Well, I mean, there's, there's millions of them, you know. So, I don't know, I mean, I, I guess the, the easiest ones that, you know, at least sounded really good to me and I, I figured that it would be a like, lot easier to play it's something like, you know, Inner Sandman, you know, Metallica, and, you know, just stuff like that, you know, those were like the first, like, cool riffs that I, I could actually pull off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then, you know, I would listen to a lot of Ozzy Osbourne, and those guys are still, you know, definitely one of my, my like, biggest influences by far. Well, ex except for Steve Vai, you know, but, like, Randy Rose, Jake Lee, and Zach Wilde. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. Like, those three guys definitely influenced me a lot. Yeah. So just you know, Crazy Train or like Miracle Man, anything, uh, anything from that that era. Did you, know. you ever 
did you ever learn a solo like note for note and just try to play with the record just to replicate what, what the artist was doing was that part yeah. of your yeah 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 like or eruption or have you ever been into Van Halen yeah well definitely yeah of course Van Halen well I I never got eruption from note to note I'm sure I could learn but you know it's yeah. I, I never got got to it but uh yeah, like those Aussie solos, for example. I would just like, you know, listen, you know, have the solos but a little bit over and over and then just, you know, kind of uh, get it right. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, like I mentioned Miracle Man before, uh, the, the solo, especially the beginning of the solo of Miracle Man, that's, uh, that's a great warm-up for me. You know, I still actually play when I'm warming up. Actually, that was one of my questions. What is your warm-up routine? How do you get ready for the show? Uh, yeah, I just play... Uh, I do a lot of picking exercises and and uh, I just like to play, you know, like not 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 make it like boring exercises all the time, you know. I like to make it more musical where I'm just like kind of jamming either with Rob or just by myself. So, but but basically, I think that the most important for me is you know just alternate pick and, and get that just get that right. And once I once I have that warmed up, then you know every, everything else kind of like comes with it. Do you go do, through your own material and tunes to warm up and to get ready for, for the stage? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Mm. Are there still parts where you think, oh my god, that's tricky to play or I need to brush up on? Yeah, I guess, you know, like like the title track, Hello Blood, um, that, you know, it's, it's just so fast and there's like, you know, obviously there's a lot of fast picking in there, you know, so that's definitely a good warm up to, you know, I actually try to do that, like, you know, just play a little faster than the actual song really is, you know, so then when I get it, like, when I get it down uh, at a faster tempo, you know, it's just, like, feels mm -hmm. so much more comfortable to mm -hmm. play that on the stage. That's a very good trick, actually, to, to play stuff faster. Yeah, definitely. It actually has to be played. Yeah. yeah. So basically what we're doing, we, the guys get two tunings. Uh, the first one is uh, whole step down to D, and the other one is drop C. So we get two wireless units for them. These are Sennheiser EW500 G3s, and those are the ones that the guitar hit signal hits. From, from those, we go to um, AudioTech input switcher. There's DC and a mute where I just have a dummy plug, so it mutes, mutes the whole system, and I also have a cable connected there. So in case of the, if the wirelesses go out for some reason, I could just run the guys with the cable, and the show goes on. From this one, the output goes to Lele P split two splitter box okay. where we split the signal and then it goes to Marshall heads. Uh, on this one, uh, this tour we're running JVM 410s, which is the amp that Alexi also uh, recorded the album with. Okay. So they're running with the tour and we'd be really happy with them. When you're splitting the signal with the Lele, so what? So the signal goes into both Marshalls and yeah. I'm actually coming to that. Yep, okay, we, so have, um, we have one marshal that is uh, powering the stage cab. All the, all, all, all the cabs that Alex is using are Marshall 1960 BVs, straight cabs with the Celestine Vintage 30s. So we uh, run the stage cab with that one. We also take a line signal with a radial JDX box. The line signal goes to the front of house. And then we have another JVM that we, uh, we're running an, an offstage cab with. It's same sound, but significantly louder. Uh, since most of the guys are on in-ears, the stage volume is not that high. So uh, what, we, what is happening that is that if we mic the uh, stage cab that is in stage center, the drums are so close that we sometimes get some problems with drums leaking into the... Uh, uh, into the mic guitar mics there. So we've solved the problem by having an offstage cab with the exact same sound, but hell of a lot louder. Yeah, okay. And that's it. No pedals, no nothing. It does Do you have backup sound. amps also in case? Yeah. This one down here is the backup amp. The way it's connected right now is that I have a switch here that controls a Weber uh, two-head amp switcher. So, I, so basically, if uh, this amp dies, I just hit the switch and that one hops in. Okay, wow. And, okay. and if, if that one dies, I just switch, uh, switch the, uh, cable, uh, the uh, speaker cable to that one because the signal will go into all the amps all, say, all the time. So uh, they sort of try to optimize the uh, uh -huh. 
idle time if, if something goes wrong. And hey, oh, question, what about in terms of effects? Does Alexi use uses any effects at uh, all? Occasionally he uses a chorus build, but most of the time there's none. It's you know, all in his hands. We, many of our uh, uh, viewers are uh, uh, young musicians themselves. Uh, how would you say can they improve their right hand technique? Is there any particular exercise that, that you think is beneficial? Or? Uh, well, there's you know something as boring as metronome. I know it sucks but it definitely does help you know that's just the way it is it's a fact mm. and, and uh, you know like what I just said basically you know if, if uh, you try to you try to learn something you know just get it down a little faster than it actually is and then you'll be surprised how fucking easy you know the whole thing actually ends up being so I mm. can you please uh, also briefly explain the Ropus uh, wreck to us sure well, it starts with the exact same notes as Alexis. We have the uh, Sennheiser Wirelesses and an audio tech switcher. From there, it goes to uh, the Engel E530 preamp, and uh, from that we split. Uh, we were actually not split it yet, but we go to the uh, TCG Force, where we have the sort of uh, old school trick of having a really slight stereo chorus where we. Uh, you know, make the sound just a bit bigger, and it also also comes out as stereo. Then, and from there we go to the uh, VHT 292 power amp. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm. Um, what is what is Alexi doing when he's not on, on stage and not recording? Uh, well, it depends. You know, <laughs> like, I, well, I mean, we, we've been on a tour. I, actually, this is a European tour. We, we've been out rolling for almost nine weeks now so I just basically at this point you know, all I can do is just I do the show and then try to try to rest as much as possible because right. like um, you have a gruesome schedule it's incredible I mean. yeah it's pretty harsh but I mean that's the way we like it though you know we're not too big on taking breaks or anything mm. we just we just do I mean we do we do a lot of touring that's for sure but but um that, that's what Chilling Bone is all about, anyway, is just touring and playing live. Right, right, right. So I understand the tour will continue next year in spring then? Because you're heading off to, to Hungary, Poland? For yeah. yeah, yeah, after this, um, we're, yeah, we're almost done with the European tour, you know. All, like, all in all, it's like ten and a half weeks. So after this, yeah, we got the Polish and the Latvia and Estonia and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, then we actually have, like, Two months, two months off, and then you know, keep going again. Go back. We go to U.S. and then we do all over Asia, Australia. Yep. We play in Russia. We do actually do like a whole week in Russia too. You know, so. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, look, Alexei, thank you so much. It's been really a pleasure. Jumalauta, se ramppaaminen loppuu. Ettu! No me baari. Kyllä tässä joku vartti varmaan menee ainakin. Joo oh, joo. Alright, Jörgi, wanna go somewhere? Yes, yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Anyway, I'm rolling. So we're rolling. So whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs>